Acadia National Park is well known for its beautiful rocky coastline, but there's a lot more to see, like its mountains, lakes, and ponds. Acadia National Park is the treasure of the North Atlantic coast, where the ocean meets the mountains. Its evergreen forests spread from rocky granite peaks to miles of rugged coastline. A visit to Acadia offers adventurers one of the most diverse landscapes in the national park system, and word is spreading fast. With 3.5 million visitors each year, it's one of the most popular national parks, yet it's also one of the smallest, covering just 49,052 acres. For comparison, Grand Teton National Park had about the same number of visitors in 2019, but is over 310,000 acres, more than six times the size of Acadia. While it can get crowded from June to August, don't let that stop you from visiting. Acadia is beautiful any time of year. You just need a few tips to avoid the crowds during peak season. Most of Acadia National Park is located on Mount Desert Island and borders the towns of Bar Harbor, Southwest Harbor, Northeast Harbor, and Mount Desert. The park also includes protected lands on Skudik Peninsula across Frenchman Bay to the east and several outer islands to the south, like Ilo O and the Cranberry Islands. Mount Desert Island is split into two parts, the east side and the west side. The eastern side is situated between Some Sound to the west and Frenchman Bay to the east. This area has all the popular attractions, making it the busiest part of the park. The main road, Park Loop Road, is 27 miles long and takes about three to four hours to drive. It follows the coastline, offering stunning ocean views and access to most tourist hotspots. On the east side, you'll find a vast network of carriage roads, Cadillac Mountain, which is the highest peak on the island, and the only two sandy beaches, Oceanfront Sand Beach and Echo Lake Beach. This side also features popular hiking trails and delicious popovers at Jordan Pond House. It's the most visited area for good reason, but there are other ways to enjoy Acadia. The west side of the park is often called the quiet side because it attracts far fewer visitors. While there are no carriage roads for biking, the hiking trails here pass through the same beautiful forests and led to open ridgelines and rugged peaks. With fewer people around, these trails feel wilder. The coastline might not be as stunning, but it offers a peaceful view all to yourself. Before we continue to the next tip on our list, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can get more travel-related information through our videos. Acadia experiences all four seasons, and it's worth visiting any time of year. The landscape is incredibly dynamic, changing colors and moods with the seasons, and there are endless recreation opportunities. Here are some tips for making the most of your trip, no matter when you visit. If you're visiting Acadia in spring, prepare for unpredictable weather, with temperatures ranging from the 30s to the 70s Fahrenheit. You might experience warm, sunny days one moment and snow or ice the next, along with potential wind and muddy trails. Mid to late April is ideal, as Park Loop Road reopens and crowds are still light. However, be aware that nearby towns don't fully open until Memorial Day weekend, so lodging and dining options may be limited. Summer is Acadia's peak season, so be prepared for heavy traffic, especially on holiday weekends when Park Loop Road can become gridlocked and parking is scarce. Make sure to start with a full tank of gas, as there are no service stations in the park. Consider purchasing your park entrance pass in advance to skip the entrance line. To avoid crowds at popular trails and landmarks, aim to arrive before 8 a.m. or after 5 p.m. Drive Park Loop Road in the morning to see scenic spots like Otter Point, Sand Beach, and Thunder Hole, then spend your day hiking, paddling, or biking. The lunch rush at Jordan Pond House, known for its popovers, can be busy, so plan to go later in the day. With temperatures ranging from around 45 degrees Fahrenheit at night to as high as 90 degrees Fahrenheit on hot days, be sure to pack for a mild coastal climate, keeping in mind that summer often brings more fog, mist, and haze. Fall is a great time to visit Acadia. 
It's less crowded, cooler, and there are fewer bugs. Just about perfect. The air is crystal clear, making it ideal for stargazing at night. And during the day, the views stretch even further. On the clearest days, you can even see Mount Katahdin, the northern end of the Appalachian Trail, from the summit of Cadillac Mountain. By mid-October, the fall foliage reaches its peak and becomes the highlight of the season. The heavily forested trails offer stunning views as the leaves change colors and fall. During this time, millions of songbirds and raptors migrate from Canada to the Caribbean and Central and South America, turning Acadia into a bird watcher's paradise. While the peaks on the east side can still be busy, the western mountains provide beautiful views of the colorful foliage as well. You can also explore the colors from the water by kayaking on one of the park's ponds or taking a boat cruise along the coast. Keep an eye on the fall foliage using Maine's Foliage Tracker. Once the leaves have fallen, Acadia becomes quiet. Many hotels, restaurants, and shops in nearby towns close for the season, and most of Park Loop Road shuts down on December 1st, reopening on April 15th if the weather allows. Most visitors to Acadia Drive, which is the best way to reach Mount Desert Island. The most common routes come from the south, using I-95 north to Bangor, then either routes 3 or 1A east through Ellsworth to Mount Desert Island. If you're new to coastal Maine and driving in from the south, consider taking at least part of scenic route 1. Keep in mind that it can get congested during the summer and peak fall foliage, so it's best to start early or travel during the off-season. There are plenty of accommodation options near Acadia, including hotels, inns, and vacation rentals. If you're interested in camping, the park has four campgrounds with different amenities, and there are 12 private campgrounds on the island. It's a good idea to book your reservation in advance. Please note that backcountry camping is not allowed in Acadia. Make sure to buy your firewood locally to prevent bringing non-native pests to the island. One private campground is Appalachian Mountain Club's Echo Lake Camp, located on the island's west side. It offers platform tents with canvas sides. The camp also has a full-service dining hall that provides three meals a day, a library, a recreation hall, flush toilets, and a shared bathhouse with hot showers. Thanks for joining us on this adventure through Acadia National Park. We hope these tips help you make the most of your visit and discover all the beauty this stunning destination has to offer. From scenic drives and hiking trails to breathtaking views and wildlife encounters, there's something for everyone to enjoy. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more travel tips and guides. Don't forget to share your own experiences or questions in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, happy exploring.